Taiwan, 1965. Not war, but a training exercise. This one, codenamed Operation Sky Soldier, is typical of those conducted by the government of the Republic of China. American observers are members of the Military Assistance Advisory Group, often referred to as MAG. Their mission? To assist, advise, and train the soldiers, sailors, and airmen of the Chinese Armed Forces. How did MAG Taiwan come about? What has it accomplished? Answers to these questions can be found in Taiwan's past history and present activities. Formosa, or Beautiful Island, it was called by early Portuguese navigators. The Chinese called it Taiwan, meaning the terraced bay. Both descriptions are valid. Taiwan is the largest of a group of 78 islands held by the Republic of China. It lies approximately 120 miles off the communist-held mainland. The islands of Matsu and Kimoi straddle the entrances to the communist-held seaports of Fuchao and Amoy. The wind-swept Pengu Isles, also known as the Pescadores or the Fishermen, are located at the southern tip of the Taiwan Straits. Taiwan is an island of considerable variety. Its eastern half is dominated by a chain of rugged mountains, a number of peaks being in excess of 12,000 feet. To the west of the central mountain system lie flat and fertile plains, ideal for the cultivation of rice, sugarcane, and pineapples the island's most important crops. The majority of the Taiwanese live in the quarter of the island that is suitable for cultivation. Taipei, the island's capital and the seat of the government of the Republic of China, is a modern city, bustling with movement and signs of 20th century prosperity. Despite the modern aspects of the capital, the citizens of Taiwan maintain their ties with age-old customs. Festivals are unmistakably Chinese, loud with gongs, drums, and firecrackers. a few minutes from Taipei, in the many rural villages, one is face to face with timeless traditions. They serve to emphasize the underlying continuity of Oriental culture. Taiwan's early history is a series of wars, rebellions, and invasions. Beginning in the 12th century, Taiwan was the object of continuous and stormy struggles between rival foreign powers, pirate terrorists, and Chinese adventurers, all anxious for a foothold on this rich and strategically placed island.
It was not until the 17th century and the arrival of Kosinga, an almost legendary figure, that Taiwan began to acquire a measure of stability. In the 19th century, Taiwan was a province of China, then under the rule of the Manchu dynasty, which brought a period of comparative peace to the troubled island. This peace, however, was to be short-lived. In 1894, Japan declared war on China. At the conclusion of the ill-fated Sino-Japanese War, Taiwan was officially ceded to Japan in whose hands it would remain for the ensuing 50 years. During the 1930s, Japan built a number of military bases and training camps on Taiwan, and during World War II used them as a springboard for attacks against China, Malaya, Hong Kong, and the Philippines. At the end of hostilities in 1945, Taiwan once again became part of Chinese territory under terms of the Cairo Conference of 1943. But on the Chinese mainland, the military situation was rapidly deteriorating. City by city, province by province, nationalist government forces were being pushed back by the more powerful communist insurgents. Finally, in 1947, the Chinese government was obliged to evacuate the mainland entirely. It withdrew to Taiwan and the offshore islands, and thus began one of the great migrations of modern times. Overnight, Taiwan's population was swollen by two million mainland refugees, soldiers, government officials, and civilians, most arriving only with what they could carry. The effect of this influx taxed all aspects of Taiwanese life. The shortage of food, runaway inflation, and the need to sustain a large military establishment were major problems that had to be resolved. the government immediately began a program of rural land reform. It proved so successful that within 10 years, the yield per acre of rice alone would increase by 41%. Most farmers were able for the first time to own their own land. There is no doubt that the foundation of Taiwan's prosperity has been the land reform program. It has dramatically increased farm production by encouraging private incentive. Direct and massive U.S. economic aid was also to play a crucial role in stimulating the Taiwanese economy. More than a billion dollars would be loaned or given to the government of the Republic of China.
Today, Taiwan's prosperity is second only to Japan's among the countries of Asia. Proof of this surging economy is the fact that in 1965, the United States was able to discontinue its economic assistance programs to Taiwan. The government's own four-year economic plans and the efforts of private businessmen were equally important in rebuilding Taiwan's economy. Exports would double during the 1950s and would double again in the early 1960s. Within a relatively short span of time, the government of the Republic of China was able to resolve many of the major problems set in motion by the sudden arrival of refugees in 1947. Eventually, the government would be in a position to eliminate the ancient spectras of unemployment and disease. Improvement in health standards would bring about a decreasing mortality rate. By 1950, the new prosperity was evident. But the island was soon to become more than just a symbol of free enterprise. Events in Korea would reinforce Taiwan's position as an important link in the free world's chain of defense. In 1950, the Korean War made it apparent that the security of Taiwan and the offshore islands was vital to the security of Asia. Their loss to the communists would critically weaken the free world's defense perimeter in the Pacific. It was therefore essential that the free Chinese people be assisted in their efforts to remain free. The resultant military assistance advisory program was clearly a response to this need. The first MAG mission began operations on Taiwan in 1951. After an initial survey of nationalists' needs, they immediately launched an extensive program. American officers and enlisted men began working directly with men of the Chinese armed forces at higher headquarters. Extensive training programs were initiated in tactics and operational techniques. Advice on management and staff procedures were intensified at all echelons. During this period, hundreds of Chinese military personnel were sent to the United States for specialized training. Mobile training teams introduced the new equipment, which had begun to flow in at an ever-increasing rate. United States technical representatives showed the Chinese how this new equipment should be used. In all, nearly $2 billion worth of military supplies would be made available to the Chinese armed forces. Courage and effectiveness of the Chinese soldier was dramatically demonstrated on the 23rd of August, 1958, when the communists opened fire on the offshore island of Kimoi. lasted 44 days, during which time hundreds of thousands of artillery and mortar shells hit the island, causing widespread destruction. In many cases, entire villages had to be abandoned. The American response was immediate. On August 27th, President Eisenhower stated that the islands of Kimoi and Matsu are more important to the defense of Taiwan now than they were three years ago. 
This was followed by a joint communique issued by the United States and the nationalist Chinese government declaring that under the present conditions, the defense of the Kimois together with the Matsus is closely related to the defense of Taiwan and Penggu. The consequence of the Kimoi incident was a rapid acceleration of the MAG program. Additional military supplies were sent to Taiwan and the offshore islands to counter the strong communist buildup on the mainland. Pilot and ground training was stepped up to meet the new emergency. The Chinese Air Force became the recipient of the latest in jet fighters. <laughs> Missile bases were established and armed with powerful Nike Hercules missiles. After its arrival on Taiwan, the first missile battery was operational in only 43 days. The Chinese Navy was strengthened by the acquisition of new vessels and the activation of training installations, depots and shipyards. Destroyers and destroyer escorts were bolstered by patrol craft to keep the communist mainland under constant surveillance. Units of the National Army worked closely with the Navy in combined amphibious operations. Special emphasis was placed by MAG on the training of frogmen. This exercise demonstrates a night raid designed to probe for information along the communist coast. The results of these efforts have been impressive. Taiwan's 600,000-man force now ranks as the world's fifth largest standing army. It is also one of the best trained. United States advisors assigned to MAG continue to work closely with their Chinese counterparts. Their work encompasses all facets of military activities. These men at an infantry school face a series of obstacles designed by United States advisors. They are similar to those that are used in American installations. United States advisors have also set up training programs in a variety of light and heavy infantry weapons, such as rifles, machine guns, mortars, and recoilless rifles. At the artillery school outside Tainan, United States advisors conduct courses in basic artillery procedures. <laughs> 
Near Tai Ching at the armor school, MAG personnel helped direct training exercises in mobile defense. Chinese soldiers working with United States Ordnance Advisors have created a large automotive base depot near Taipei. This depot has the capacity of turning out as many as 20 rebuilt vehicles a day, an unusual achievement for any repair depot. MAG efforts on Taiwan place special emphasis on airborne training. At the Chinese Airborne Training School near Ping Tong, a United States airborne advisor supervises correct landing techniques. soon ready for the real thing. Out of such exercises grows a natural respect between United States and Chinese military personnel. Equally important is the person-to-person -person contact which has developed between MAG advisors, their families, and the citizens of Taiwan. It has accounted for many lasting friendships. These American wives who conduct English classes in Taipei are adding to the total success of this person-to-person -person contact. MAG personnel have reason to be proud of their accomplishments. What they have achieved can be shown most graphically by a visit to Kimoi, where shelling still continues, but with propaganda leaflet rounds and only on odd-numbered days. Kimoi, just 12 miles square, is a complex network of underground corridors and fortifications blasted out of solid rock. This tunnel leads to the office of the Chief of the Defense Command Advisory Team. Much of their effort is devoted to a careful study of the many training programs now in operation. Intensive refresher training in an area so close to enemy positions is an important part of the MAG program. On Kimoi, MAG personnel and their Chinese counterparts live in caves or tunnels in close proximity to their duty stations. But even in this labyrinth of underground passages, daily routines and duties are followed as they would be in any other military establishment. The Chinese nationalist soldiers stationed on Kimoi are well-trained and well-equipped, and their morale is excellent. 
They accept their responsibilities with the knowledge that they are contributing to the defense of their country. From Kimoi, MAG advisors make regular inspection trips to other islands in the Taiwan complex, some lying only a few thousand yards off the communist-held mainland. On Ta Tan, frequent propaganda broadcasts are beamed to the Chinese across the straits. Cargo planes are also used to carry such items as rice and leaflets on airdrops over the mainland. Observers on Air Tan keep the communist coastline under 24-hour observation. Maps and mock-ups of the Amoy area aid in the location of communist emplacements and other strategic installations. These maps are constantly being updated. What else the nationalist soldiers are likely to see in the near future, no one can predict with any certainty. But one thing is quite clear. The defense of this island and the others in the Taiwan complex will continue to depend on the strength and ability of the Chinese armed forces. And because a part of their military effectiveness is a direct result of MAG assistance, we are all indebted to the thousands of Americans who have served with such distinction as members of the Military Assistance Advisory Group. Mm -hmm.